I'm a leader and she's trying to take over leadership. If you're a leader, they don't do that. Okay. That means she wants your position. They don't take a leader's position. They'll, you might be strong, but you're not quite a leader. A leader is just a little bit extra. So, okay, this one's an easy one. Tips for a six-year-old who always who's always laid out the door, gets distracted a lot. Say, okay, from now on, and you say this to all the kids, you got 10 minutes to get out the door. If not, there's a consequence later on after school or whatever. So just give, and then when the beeper goes off, they're still not ready. Say, well, there'll be a consequence. No anger. Okay, no anger. Just say, okay, you understand. Timer's over. You're not ready. So there'll be a consequence. But I'm almost ready. You're not ready. So you're not ready, right? You know what I mean? Like you got to stand by that. So give them a really fair amount of time to get ready. So if it's just 10 minutes, all they have to do is put their shoes on and their jacket and grab their bag. 10 minutes is plenty of time. Uh, so yeah, just have a have it timed and say when you're not ready on time, then there'll be a consequence after school. Do you have recommendations, examples of non-competitive games? I've got way too many of those. Um, one of my favorite uh, things that I've been dealing with or recommending to clients is doing TikTok dances, imitating things like look on TikTok what families are doing together. You know, all those silly games when they put water in their mouth and, you know, <laughs> they're not allowed to laugh and stuff like that, that kind of stuff, just silly games. So yeah, silly stuff. There's no winner, no loser, but it's all based on laughter. Okay, my three kids only seem to listen when I turn ugly. That's because yelling, hitting, being turning ugly works in the short term, but in the long term, it backfires big time. So it's just, you're only doing that because you don't know what else to do. And that's what I'm teaching here. I'm teaching you what else to do. Check out my links above. You can see my free behavior board, my mini toddler courses, my big boot camp course, three to 12 years old. It's all about you and your leadership. Five weeks to get respect. Now that five weeks doesn't end at five weeks. You got to keep doing the work, okay? But once you've got the mutual respect, maintaining it is easy. Getting it is hard, maintaining it is easy. So check that out. Or you can look into coaching with me. There's a wait list for that because I'm booked up right now. But anyway, you'll be you'll be put in a queue. You don't need to turn ugly. You can learn. You're just doing it because you don't know what else to do. That's all. And it's really rare if I get clients who don't yell. I had new clients yesterday. And I and no yelling is almost always the rule for the parents. But every so often, maybe once a, every week or two, no, less than that, probably every month, I'll get clients who say, no, we don't yell. And I'm like, I don't even know what to do with them. Like everyone yells because it works in the moment, but it backfires down the road. If they only yell, you only yell because you don't know what else to do. Okay. But generally schools are very small pool to pull from there. And especially when they're in grade school, they've only got one class to pull friends from. And if they just don't happen to click with anyone in there, I've been in that situation. I was pretty outgoing, but you know, you don't always have a friend in your class, right? Anyway. So I would get her out and do as many as activities away from that school crowd as possible. So she has a bigger pool to pull friends from. Okay. And you can do role playing with her. You can say, Hey, look, this is how you make friends. And you pretend you're her and she's, or you're, she's her. And then you're the, the other kid and then do vice versa. And you just do role playing back and forth and have fun with it. And you teach her to ask the other kids about themselves. Everyone loves talking about themselves. So say, ask them, what's your favorite game? What do you like? You know, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. Okay, uh, sibling rivalry, fighting, SOS. Yeah, I don't know. I got a million different ideas for that, but it, it depends on each family, what's going on, how old they are. Are they same sex, different sex? How many years apart are they and all that stuff? When did it start? What kind of fighting? Is it physical? So that's sort of one that I'd have to look into. But you can check out the boot camp course. It goes from three to 12 years old. Once you're a leader, the fighting, the attitude, all that stuff tends to go away. Because once they have a really calm leader in the house, it just tends to regulate their emotions. You know, there, it sounds like they're just a little bit out of control. They don't know how to get along. And also people are so focused on what to uh, stop kids from doing. Focus on how to teach them how to get along. Play games with them, non-competitive games. There's no winner. There's no loser. So just play non-competitive games with them. Show them how to get along just by playing with them as a group. Um, but yeah, I got a million ideas for that. But Advice for screen time. There's three different ways to manage screen time. Um, two are very similar. One is that you have an allotted time period each day, so seven to eight o'clock every night, whatever. The other one is you have an allotted period of time every day. You've got one hour a day on screen time. I don't like either one of those because you're kind of micromanaging that. The one I like is when you give them a certain amount of hours per week past the age of about five or six when they can do this. And you say, okay, so you've got whatever five. Oh, my drain. Just, did you hear that? That was the drain. Anyway, um, they must be working on plumbing in the building. Anyway, so you say, okay, so you're five years old, you've got five hours a week or 10, I don't know, whatever you want. It's not, don't worry about the, you decide how many hours. And then you say, and you can decide when that is. And oftentimes, if you're not a leader and they know they can push you around, they will binge it and they'll finish all their hours by Wednesday or something. So they've got no screens Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Tough lesson for them and it's hell for you, but they don't usually do that a second week. 
So yeah, so it's it's give them an hour. You keep track of that, by the way. Keep track of the minutes. And uh, if they go over, then they lose that. They lose double that the next week, and they can't bank it either. I don't encourage to, uh, kids to do their homework on their own. Well, um, it's an incentive-based program, so you can say, look, sure you can play video games or have screen time as soon as you've done your homework. Use the as soon as method, and it's incentive-based. So sure, you can have video games or sure you can watch that show or whatever. As soon as you've done your homework, they'll, what you're doing there is you're teaching them how to have self-discipline. You're teaching them how to do what they need to do before they can do what they want to do. They're eight and 10 years old. They'll do this. Okay, they can learn. So say, sure, I, it's the as soon as method. Of course, you can watch TV. Of course, you can have that. Of course, whatever. As soon as you've done your homework. So yeah, you're teaching them self-discipline. Five-year-old boy being scared at night for monsters. Okay, here's the thing. My kids both went through that and I told them, I said, look, monsters are terrified of me because I know how to deal with monsters. So I'm going to check in every closet, every drawer, under your bed, behind every bookcase. I'm going to check. And as soon as they see me come and they're taken off and they never come back, they get, they just know I live here. So I just did that with my kids and they believed me because I was already a really strong leader. So when I said something, they kind of went, oh, okay. So yeah, I'm a leader and she's trying to take over leadership. If you're a leader, they don't do that. Okay. That means she wants your position. They don't take a leader's position. They'll, you might be strong, but you're not quite a leader. A leader is just a little bit extra. So you might want to look into that. I'm wondering what you might be missing because they don't do they don't take over leadership. Uh, I'll tell you why. Um, I got a million examples. But anyway, my son was 15 years old and he wanted to rebel. He was one of those. He just wanted to rebel because all his friends are rebelling against their parents. And he came home one day and he was kind of mad at me. <laughs> He's 15. And he says, he says, you've been a really difficult mom. And I said, I was shocked. I thought it was great. And I said, why? And he says, because I could never rebel. You're too reasonable and easy to talk to. You see, a leader is not that authority. That's They don't try and take over with a leader. They try and take over with an authority. Okay? I'm not an authority. I'm a leader. That means I know how to give respect to get it. And there's no rebellion. There's no taking over. It's not. It's just not like that. There's no power struggles. It's just a very much a feeling of they had a voice. I had a voice. It was mutual. I was definitely in charge. I was mom, but I, it's just different. So yeah, I'm, I'm suggesting you're the authority. That's They will try and take over for, with the authority for sure. They'll rebel against the authority. There's nothing to rebel against with a leader. There's nothing to try and take over. How do you help your child if he feels embarrassed often about doing things wrong or not perfect? That's the perfectionist. There's, perfectionism is so, it's usually insecurity based, right? Anyone who won't do anything because it has, has to be perfect. It's all low self-esteem, you know. So yeah, work on your child's self-esteem. That's what you do. And um, and also, do you make a big deal out of winning? And do you really strive? Oh, maybe you'll get A's next time. See, I never talk like that with my kids. Um, they did very well, but I never discussed it like that. I just said, oh, way to go. You know, did you do your best? That's great, you know. Um, but yeah, maybe you put too much emphasis on winning. And like I always said to my kids, the road to success is paved with failures. If you're not failing as you're going along in life, you're not trying hard enough. Because the change requires learning and getting out of your comfort zone. Okay, so that means failing. There's there's no there's only shame in not trying. There's no shame in failing. So yeah, start talking like that with your kid. Uh, they ask, what do you do about a five year old that always has a negative poor me attitude with losing games or with any situation that is not in his favor? That is usually a learned behavior. Children are not born to be poor sports. OK, my mother always raved about my brother and I. She always said, you're such good sports. My mother was a real gamer. She loved gaming. So, like it was usually cards. Like I, I grew up playing crib, poker. You know, we played a lot of cards and crib. Anyway, and she never focused on the winning. She said, you play to win. It doesn't matter if you win, if that makes any sense. Just do your best. So she would always she said, I'd rather lose and play well than win my luck. So, you know, I'm suggesting maybe you're emphasizing winning rather than just having fun and playing well. So perhaps Even when I was a little kid, I thought, why does mom keep going on about us being such good sports? Like I didn't understand what a poor sport was. <laughs> like I thought, why would you care if you win? Like, you know, and then I remember I saw a friend once. Um, I wasn't in the game, but I saw them playing ga uh, games and the kid flipped the whole board over when they lost. I thought, oh, that's a poor sport. Oh, I get it now. <laughs> Been using the behavior board, which is working well. But what do you do? And the behavior board's free in the link above, by the way. What do you do when they have already used their screen time for the day and you get up to the media blackout consequence, but they don't have any left for that day? Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, then just say it starts 24 hours starting tomorrow or whatever. So just start tomorrow. It's 20. So if they've already had screen time for that night, say 
tomorrow morning we have 24 hours screen time, but then it would work out 24 hours just start it's 24 hours of blackout so it's gonna hit into that daily screen time anyway am i right does that make sense i can't do math but that's not even math that's just common sense if it's 24 hours it's still going to kick into that next day's screen time anyway i have a three and a half year old that has picked up a curse word and i can't get her to stop put down no bad words and explain what that is you don't have to say it but say that word you know the one that we keep telling you not to say put no no bad words on the behavior board and every time she says that bad word then there's a consequence. Check out the behavior board. It's completely free in the link above. It'll, it'll explain how to do this. So I'm moving around a lot. My back's killing me today. So what do you do if they start to hit to get your attention during the tantrum? So that's when they're having a tantrum, they'll often hit, they'll even bite themselves. So you just say one calm no, and then you physically restrain them from being violent. You don't look at them or talk to them though. You just physically restrain, let them go. If they go again, you know, if they start hitting again, then just physically restrain them again. So um, but yeah, you just don't allow them to get violent when they're having a tantrum. And there's no punishment for that. During a tantrum, they've already lost their nuts, so you can't punish for that. And you never discuss the tantrum before, during, or after. Never. Why would you? What's the point? Um, I get um, child psychologists as clients sometimes, and they'll argue this. They'll say, you know, you got to validate all their feelings and emotions. Uh, no freaking way am I validating a loss of emotional control at not getting their own way. You know what I mean? Like the, the, you don't need to validate everything. Yeah. They're just mad because they didn't get their own way. You don't need to validate that. All these mini therapy sessions discussing this, it makes things worse. Okay. Any ideas for keeping three and five year olds sitting at the table during mealtime? Yeah. I call it mealtime battles. Just have a mealtime routine written on the behavior board and you say, follow mealtime routine. At the bottom of the behavior board, write down the mealtime routine. You come to the table within five minutes of being asked to do so. You don't get up from the table, no toys or screens at the table. And when you, when you leave the table, when you're all done, you ask permission, can I leave? I'm all done, can I leave? Or whatever. So you just have a whole routine written out. They're three and five years old, they can understand that. Um, and then you don't say much during them breaking the rules. You just kind of let them break the rules. And then you might say, okay, well then no TV tonight or no, no screens tonight or something like that. You can do it a million different ways you can do that. But make sure there's a consequence. We all learn through consequences. Us adults learn through consequences. We pay our taxes because we don't want to go to jail. We pay our mortgage because we don't want it to be foreclosed on. You see what I'm saying? Consequences are what makes the world go round, right? We put on sunscreen so we don't get a sunburn. We, you know what I mean? Everything we do is sort of a consequence attached to it. The sooner you teach this to your children and make them responsible for their own actions, the better. You're doing them a favor by doing this. Can I put not listening to mommy, something I can use on the behavior board? No, you know what you're saying? Be a perfect child. That's ridiculous because are you earning their respect? They don't listen to a non-leader. Why would, why should they? OK, you got to earn that respect. You get their respect and they will listen. It happens organically. Just put actions on there like um, stop hitting or uh, make your bed every morning, something like that. So it has to be an action. But yeah, you're basically saying, I don't want to earn your respect. You just listen to me anyway. You see what I mean? It makes no sense at all. You got to earn that respect. People just demand it. You can't demand it. You got to command it. Set yourself up as a leader. Everything I talk about is leadership based. Leaders are fun. They make kids feel good about themselves. Check out the pool story. It's called the example of leadership parenting. I think it's the first video here on, where am I, on Facebook. I know it is on um, Instagram and TikTok. Uh, I actually went in and put it there myself, but my daughter does all my social media. So I don't know where it is here. It's called example of leadership parenting. And that's the pool story. It explains what leadership's all about. I deal with bad behavior. Then I focus on the good kid. My goal when kids are with me, my goal is that they like themselves when they're with me. They have pride in themselves when they're with me. Therefore they want to please me. Or when they're teenagers, they just wouldn't want to disappoint me because they feel good about themselves. Leaders make other people feel good about themselves, not good about them. I mean, that happens organically, but that's not your goal. Your goal, no one wants to be impressed. You know, people go out there to impress people all the time. It's just so stupid. Yeah, people don't want to be impressed. They just want to have fun. Don't try and impress your kids either. Just be fun. Fun is their love language, okay? Deal with bad behavior, then be fun. How do I start over parenting? My older kids are eight and 10. It's not too late. Teenagers, it's hard. Um, but yeah, it's doable, but it's hard. Eight and 10, they're still quite young, right? They're tiny. Um, check out my boot camp course. That might be a really good fit for you. It's five weeks, teaches you how to set yourself up as a leader. Summer's a really good time to do that because you got more time with them, right? Uh, consequences for four and seven-year-olds who don't use iPads. Oh, so they've got no screens, in other words. So you just take, a, take away a favorite toy or you can invent leverage. Say tonight we were going to go out for ice cream, but we had a bad day today. So no ice cream. We might go tomorrow night if we have a better day. I got a million different ideas for that, but that's just one. So you can invent leverage, 
telling me that you'll you were going to do something, but now you're not. You're taking it away. You're taking away something that never was. Okay. Um, the old fashioned authority style parent was not a bad way to parent. It worked, but they did rebel in the teen years, but they shot out the other end just fine. And they appreciated what their parents did for them. The new fashion about 40 years ago, I call it the pleaser parent style. Um, and it was, it started with participation awards. Stupidest thing I ever heard of. I couldn't believe it when I heard that. Like just yesterday, I was at the supermarket. I turned up, I participated. No one gave me an award. Talk about raising self-entitled snowflakes with mental health issues. Anyway, that was 40 years ago. And I can remember saying, boy, we're in for it. You know, I remember saying that we are in for it. <laughs> so, and here we are, you know, these all these woke victims always looking for a reason to be victims. And that's mental health. If I hear that one more time, people throw around, there is real mental health issues out there, but people throw that around just to make themselves look like a victim. And there's not much you can say. Well, I've got, I've got mental health issues. What can you say to that? Like they're, you know, they kind of, it's a passive aggressive way of getting sympathy. It's really frustrating. I see it all the time. And that's what you're raising if you're raising uh, with the pleaser style parent, trying to roll out the red carpet for them, making everything easy for them, not making them accountable, being afraid of upsetting them, having making sure they get participation awards just for breathing, all that stuff. It's a total disaster. They wipe their feet all over you. They never respect you. They rebel right through the little years, the teen years, and they grow up in there. It's just a disaster. I'm exaggerating, of course. I'm just trying to get my point across. Uh, please help. My five-year-old begs. I say no, she persists and says please over and over again. That's a learned behavior. You've taught her to do that. There's past the age of four, they only do what works. It says to me that she can eventually break you down and she knows it. So I would just say to she's five years old. And I said, if you keep coming at me, we'll make your consequence worse. So once you've said no to something, say, I'll tell you what, you keep coming at me, there'll be a consequence. Check out the behavior board and have a consequence for continuous begging. I would put that. It's not so much in the attitude department because an attitude is a little bit more of a subtle thing. But this constant begging, say, if you constantly beg, once I've said no, don't keep begging. And if you do, there's a consequence. So she can do whatever she wants. We're never really stop trying to stop kids from doing things. We want them to learn how to stop themselves from doing things. So that's why you add a consequence if she keeps begging. You keep at me, there'll be a consequence. Please, please. Okay, no TV tonight. That was your choice. That's how I do it. I would never use a behavior board. It's a teaching tool. Don't start just doing what I just said. That's sort of next level. Look at the behavior board, have a consequence for repeated begging after she's been told no. That's not in the attitude department. That would be more of an action. Best way to parent a seven-year-old boy with ADHD. I don't know how to tell you this, but ADHD is not a disability. Those are all the kids I learned this with. Um, yeah, don't treat it like, don't treat them like they're different. The problem with ADHD is a lot. It's now it's just sort of treated like, it's almost like an excuse to have a kid that's out of control. And yeah, I know they are more challenging, but you can still do this. Leadership is, I learned all this with those kids. I didn't, my kids didn't have it, but all the kids I worked with, I never once ever got handed an easy kid to work with. Not once, not ever. No one ever said to me, here's an easy one, Lisa. They all went, good luck with this one. They were all ADHD, XYZ. I call them alphabet kids, okay? They were all challenging kids. This stuff worked with them. So, yeah. Like, don't, ADHD means nothing to me. What if they have ADHD? So like, it's not a disability. It's not. Autism is more of a disability, depending on where they are in the spectrum. That would be coaching. Um, but yeah. What to do with a four-year-old wedding herself daily? I don't know the, the context around that. I don't know why she's doing that. So I'd have to assess that. So yeah. But anyway, just setting up your leadership skills might help. Um, it tends to calm children down, make them less stressed. Maybe it's stress. I don't know. Um, so check out the boot camp course. That might be a good fit for you. It goes from three to 12 years old. When they're three to 12 years old, their behavior is 100% a direct result of your parenting. Uh, under that, they're just nuts anyway, because they're toddlers, they're just forming. And teenagers, you want them to be more their own leaders, and you're there for backup for the big stuff. Okay, about three to 12 years old. That's why the boot camp course, I know three is very different from a 12 year old, but you're still at the height of your leadership in those age in that age bracket. Uh, lies a lot, put down no lying on the behavior board and start there. Say no lying. When you catch them in a lie, there's a consequence. Now, if you're shaming a child, like I had a client yesterday and she said to me, she goes, as soon as I said it, I realized it was wrong. Her child had done something. I don't know. He's lied about something. I can't remember. <laughs> actually, that was the same kid. He was funny. He's a funny little guy. I think he's very, actually very smart. Anyway, uh, he'd done something. And the mother said, why would you do that? That's shaming. I, I, you don't do that. That's shaming. Never shame a child. You, there should be no shame in this. There should just be accountability. Say, well, look, you messed up. You did that. Here's the consequence. Okay, and that's it. Do you understand? And that's it. No shaming. So if they lie, say, oh, caught you in a lie. Here's the consequence. 
Don't say, why would you lie? You know, you should always tell the truth. Don't do all that nagging and shaming. And they're just going to shut you out. They're not going to listen to anything you say if you start talking like that. Big mistake. Behavior board is a success here in my house. Oh, excellent. Happy to hear that. The behavior board is a tool that I invented like 16 years ago. I've been coaching for 17 years, but I was teaching what I do. I would never use a behavior board. And I, so I never thought to use one to make one up. So I'm, then I thought, what am I doing wrong here? People just aren't quite getting it. Um, you know, they were doing, they were getting results, but not nowhere near what I thought they should. You don't just teach what you do. You teach what you, what they, how people need to learn. Right. So anyway, I was a year into my coaching business and then I invented the behavior board and I put the parents on it too. It changed everything because I was trying to explain to parents how you have to be accountable. I'll tell you, if I messed up, my kids loved it. They had a voice. Believe me, mom, didn't you say you were going to do that? And you forgot. I go, Oh shoot. What do you want? We'd love to go to the water slide park tomorrow. <laughs> like they had a voice. I was accountable. I was very much a leader, but I was accountable. So it changed everything. It's just a way to teach you about leadership. You only use that for about three weeks. Then you go off the behavior boards. You can keep going back to it. It's, you know, to put something on there if you want. But overall, you don't need that after a while. You just use in the moment discipline, which is what I did. Also, when you go to in the moment discipline, um, you're not there yet if you're brand new. But in the, in the boot camp course, you'll see this. And in coaching, we talk about this a lot. So in the moment discipline, you can defer the punishment. So if they act out in the car on the way to school, you say something like this. Hey, I didn't like that. We'll discuss it later. Um, and then that's it. That's called deferred punishment. It gives them time, sweat, them time to sweat and you time to think about what you're going to do. So then if they say, but what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Not fair. And say, you keep coming at me. I'll make it worse. So you see what I mean? Just take control. So you don't have to discipline. Right? You, you address the bad behavior in the moment, but you deal with it when you're able to. So 